A new blood test can detect over 50 different types of cancers well before any symptoms appear, and two massive studies have been published, suggesting that this blood test will revolutionise cancer diagnosis and treatment. It's called the Gallery Test, and it works by analysing more than 1 million methylation sites in DNA fragments in the blood. Methylation determines what parts of our DNA should be switched on and off, and it can serve as a marker for cancer. The human body routinely releases DNA fragments from our cells into our blood, and these fragments often contain features that indicate what type of cell they were from, including what type of cancer. This is a big deal because more than 70% of cancer deaths, they come from cancers that don't have recommended screening. We'll go through those recommended cancer screening programs at the end of the video, but for now let's have a look at those two new studies. The first one was published last year in September, and it was called the Pathfinder Trial. Participants were aged 50 and above, and they didn't have any indication of cancer before they started the trial. The blood test was done, and these participants were followed up for one year. Now, what's crucial about these tests is that they have to be accurate. There's no point in doing a blood test that says that everyone's got cancer, and equally, we need to make sure that we aren't missing cancers. So in this trial, the blood test had a positive cancer signal in 1.4% of the participants, or 92 people in total. And of those 92 people, after going through extra tests, 35 of them were confirmed as having cancer. So there were some false positives, but that is to be expected. No test is going to be perfect. But what's of particular interest is the negative predictive value. That came in at 98.6%, meaning that if you did this blood test and it came back negative, there was a 98.6% chance that you didn't have cancer. Overall, the study shows that it is feasible to detect cancers early using blood tests. And after the results came back, the algorithm was tweaked, and a new study called Pathfinder 2 is currently underway using the refined version. So that's the first trial, and it's groundbreaking because it shows that these types of tests, they can be used as a screening tool. But what about for people that have symptoms that suggest they may have cancer, but nothing is diagnosed yet? Well, that brings us on to the second trial. It's called the Simplify Study, and it enrolled over 6,000 patients who were urgently referred for further imaging or other tests to investigate symptoms that are suspicious for cancers. So these are patients that presented with symptoms such as unexpected weight loss, change in bowel habits, bleeding, abdominal pain, and anemia. So these patients underwent all of the appropriate tests and investigations, but they also did the gallery blood test. And after the usual tests were done, those results were compared to the gallery blood tests. Within the study, 368 people were diagnosed as having cancer, whereas the gallery test had a positive cancer signal in 323 people, overall resulting in a positive predictive value of 75.5% and a negative predictive value of 97.6%. To me as a clinician, these results are game-changing. I see patients with unexplained symptoms every day at the clinic. So if I can use a blood test that tells me that there's a 97.6% chance that the patient sitting in front of me doesn't have cancer, that is amazing. It means that these tools can both expedite cancer diagnosis and potentially avoid invasive and costly investigations that are needed to more accurately triage patients who present with non-specific cancer symptoms. There are a lot more studies underway using the gallery test and I'm very excited about this avenue for cancer diagnosis and treatment. But before we get carried away, there are a few crucial points. These tests are not yet FDA cleared or approved. We still need further refinement and studies before this blood test can be used for the general population. That brings us onto the cancer screening tools that are available today and that everyone should be doing. They are validated to detect cancer early and save lives. And they're from the American Cancer Society guidelines. The first one is breast cancer. Women of the ages between 40 and 44, they should have a choice whether to start annual breast cancer screening with mammograms, and from the age of 45, they should be getting these mammograms every year. For colon and rectal cancer, the American Cancer Society recommends starting regular screening from age 45. This can be done using a stool test or a colonoscopy. For cervical cancer, smears should start from age 25. And even those that have been vaccinated against HPV, they should still follow the screening recommendations for their age group. Lung cancer is tricky and there's been a lot of work done, so currently the recommendations suggest that if you're between 50 and 80 years old and you currently smoke or have quit in the past 15 years and have at least a 20-pack year smoking history, then you should have a CT scan of your lungs. 
For prostate cancer, starting at age 50, men should talk to their healthcare provider about the pros and cons of testing so that they can decide if testing is the right choice for them. And if you do decide to get tested, you should get a PSA blood test with or without a rectal exam. One of the questions that often comes up is whether people should get whole body MRI scans. However, there's no data suggesting that these MRI studies will improve survival or improve the likelihood of finding a tumour. Whole body scanning has a risk of false positive findings that can result in unnecessary testing and procedures with additional risks. So currently the guidelines suggest to not get full body MRI scans. The final screening program is ovarian cancer, but unfortunately this was a big disappointment. A massive study showed that screening with both blood tests and ultrasounds did not reduce ovarian cancer deaths, and therefore general population screening cannot be recommended. Which is another reason why I'm so hopeful that this new gallery blood test can radically change things. But aside from cancer screening, if you want to find out about two medications I personally take to further improve my health, make sure to check out this next video here. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients, as well as the 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.